Well, we put the plaster on here, so now it feels fairly hard. It's gone to a sort of, um, well, I can still cut it with my nail. It's still that sort of stuff. So I'll take the, um, the plasticine off now. There we go. And I'll just see if I can show you the inside before we start. So it's fairly a nice clean shape. It will need cutting back a little bit. Um, but we'll, we'll just cut the, uh, the outside first. Kitchen knives, of course. And there are lots of synthetic materials we can now use to do the inside. But the um, plaster of Paris seems to wear really well. And you can decorate it or not decorate it. It's fairly easy to cut. And if you do, when it's really set up hard, if you take a saw cut down there, those two pieces will just click out. It's not like putting a synthet synthetic resin on, like epoxy or polyester paste that are really going to bond up with the pot forever and ever. Because somebody might come back in 50 years and say, hey, that guy didn't get the shape quite right. We want to do it again. The important thing, of course, is not to slip and cut the pot. And yeah, I really have my knives really quite sharp. I find it easier if I cut this end shape um, into the, it, there's a curve in here. And I find it easier if I do that before I start on this. You can see the plaster's already getting quite, quite hard to cut. It's absolutely critical not to uh, let it get really hard because you make a lot of dust everywhere and you don't get such a nice finish as we can get on this cutting at this state. I think that's somewhere around about the, the right curve. Now I'm just going to We can, of course, cut this down with a file. We use the sort of files that people nowadays use for, for cutting uh, Parmesan cheese, that sort of thing, with an open grid on it. But they're very, very sharp blades. And if you're not careful and slip onto the pot, it really does a lot of, of damage. I, I like using a kitchen knife with a curve that goes away from me, traditional knife shape, rather than a straight blade. With a straight blade, you tend to dig in to the pot. But with this, it's always you've got the curve going up. So if you're careful, you don't get to a position where you're actually cutting the pot. So what I've done now is it's nearly down to the right level.
and I'll just trim up this edge. I can put the finishing touches to it later, but it's absolutely critical to get the um, main amount of the plaster off at this stage while well, it's still reasonably soft. The other important thing is in, in cutting plaster, there's a tendency, because it's just the way people work, is to make it um, very accurate in shape, a continuous curve and a beautiful line when you cut it. But of course, this part is handmade and it's very irregular. So it's, it's important not to make your plaster work too good, else it really does look very peculiar when it's on display. smaller pieces of plaster like this, we can really match up the pot exactly and perhaps even put some of the decoration on because there's absolutely no doubt about what shape the pot was here. It's this curve continued around here in sort of castellation. Um, so we can make this really accurate and paint it up fairly close because we're, we're not actually faking anything. We're absolutely sure that this is the uh, the right shape. Where we get into larger areas of plaster and we get into surmising what the shape was, we tend to leave it a little bit plainer and not um, just make it blend in rather than match up exactly. I think that's pretty good. I can clean it up when it's a bit drier, but we've got the, uh, I'll just put a, a slight curve on here cut the edge down. It's really important to develop a, a good eye for pots so you can um, and hold the knife very firmly so you can get a really nice line. So that's the um, that's it roughed into shape at this stage. Still perhaps a little high and I'll cut some off the outside. But basically that's what it's all about. It's important to clean off this um, this wet plaster um, at, at, uh, at about this stage and uh, to brush it all out brush it first, never wet it first, and then go over the plaster with a damp cloth. So I'm going to have to repeat what I did again on the outside. You can see the plaster was came through a little deep. I guess the um, plasticine had pulled away from the pot and it's allowed the plaster to come through a little more than I wanted. But it stopped it running all over the pot. Of course, when we use a balloon to blow up inside, the balloon actually clings right up closely to this. But all I'm going to do with this is just to, uh, bearing in mind all the time that we're dealing with a very, very fragile pot that um, it's a fairly smooth edge on the inside it doesn't uh, it's not rounded so much as it is I hope you can hear the the sound of the knife on the plaster in about an hour's time it's really going to get too hard to cut and now I've taken the plasticine away from the inside it allows the moisture to evaporate out of the plaster very rapidly You can hear it's getting quite hard now. So that's pretty neat, and we'll clean it up again afterwards. But that basically is, is the shape from the 